I am and was very interested in, say, the measuring of the inductance of coils that have a high inductance. Say, for instance, this 12 volt transformer uh, made for 200 and uh, 230 volts primary, secondary, 12 volts, etc. etc. This is also another transformer, somewhat old, but anyway, same issue, same ID, 220 volts in or 230 volts in, and in this case, approximately. 18 volts out. What is the inductance of, of such a big transformer? Uh, we are not talking in the millihenry range or the microhenry range. Uh, I've made uh, quite a few test circuits uh, and you can find them on my YouTube channel where uh, you can measure in a very simple way via the, uh, the resonance method uh, coils that are in the order of say uh, 10 microhenry and 500 microhenry but the idea is now to make something that <coughs> can measure these high inductance coils uh, this is a, a very old book. And uh, it's from perhaps from 90, uh, 1945 or so. This is a beautiful circuit about how to make a simple oscilloscope. Has of course nothing to do with the circuit that I'm working on now, but perhaps it's interesting. Um, la radio Laboratory Handbook Decided. Anyway, um, at first I want to go to the here uh, the index in that book. Uh, the book was um, written by this man, uh, uh, M.G. Strokey, consulting radio engineer, the, the author's laboratory, well, uh, looks like a mess, of course, but surely was no mess in those days. Um, it is from 90, that's always a problem with old books, they often don't give, say, the um, say the the pu publication date. I don't know why that is. Uh, I often find that in the Netherlands in old books, etc., etc. So I say this is. Uh, approximately from 1938. Anyway, it could be from another date. And of course, when you read it, you can say, uh, look at what's written and get an idea whether it was uh, written before World War II or after World War II. Say, perhaps it's somewhere in the in between. Anyway, many very interesting circuits. Uh, and the good thing is that Mr. Scroggy is very critical, especially about measuring circuits. Anyway, what can we tell about it more? Um, of course, these are all very old school, uh, say, measuring devices. They look very coarse 
to our modern 2025 eyes anyway. Um, but of course the pictures are also very nice to see. But more important is of course the content of the book. Uh, for instance here some inexpensive and very useful electronic indicators. I realized that I've moved very very quick and I want to be say more slow when showing parts of this beautiful old book. Uh, well, well for here for instance a universal bridge is a measuring bridge. Many of these bridges are based on say the Wheatstone Bridge and there were other uh, engineers in the past that have um, say attached their name to their own bridges. Um, but in general when we are say st strictly looking at all these old measuring bridges they can often or more in general always be related to the so-called Wheatstone Bridge where we have say uh, two, sorry, four resistors or four capacitors of the same value and uh, in between the, these two electrodes there is a microamperometer and when the bridge gets out of its um, null the meter will move and of course when a meter moves you can say in a certain way expect that a, a voltage is changing and you can use that voltage to drive something, could be everything, a motor, um, uh, etc, etc. Many of these bridges were used and are still used now. Um, say to uh, switch a certain pump on or off or say all kinds of other devices. Of course that must be done via a, a transistor or a tube etc etc. Anyway, um, well that's quite a long uh, video but I only wanted to talk about my first experiment here uh, where I wanted to use one of the circuits in this book. This is also perhaps very interesting to show. The piano standard, standard of frequency. Well, will you know a little bit about audio technology? This is helpful. Anyway, I skip in a certain way far too, too quick over all these very interesting and important things. But let me go to uh, the circuit that I'm working on here. Uh, it's about measuring inductance and that's the idea and this is as far as I could see the most simple ID with which you can measure inductance. Uh, here is the coil under test. It is bridged with a capacitor and here is the capacitor bridge that I'm working on. Of course the values are quite high because we work with 50 Hertz here and there's also in this book uh, a description where they work with DC. Well anyway I want to work with AC 
So we have here a meter, an AC ampere meter, milliampere meter. And the idea of this bridge is that um, when the capacitor is aligned to a certain position and you uh, close the switch here, uh, there must be no difference when there is no difference between switch open and switch closed, we have a, a certain situation where we can get an idea about the inductance of the coil. Uh, this is very sloppy, what, what I'm talking, but anyway, I will pan over somewhat in this book to get to the right information. So here is that the the formula that is valid in this case. This is the next page, and this was very interesting for me uh, because uh, here is an approximate table based on a frequency of 50 hertz, and that's the reason why I made here these capacitors. And I want to switch them in. Uh, the reason that this is important for me that we have here a, a kind of indication of the inductance in Henry's. And I did not find in an other book, say, a circuit that was better or comparable. So, pen over somewhat here. Thanks for watching. My camera flickers, so it's only 15 minutes that I'm going to do, etc. etc. Here is the other page of the book. Beautiful old book of the say 1940s, with in this case such an important um, table. And I want to rely on the table and on that table, by the way. Uh, absolutely not sure that this is going to work. So this is only a vlog of what I am doing at the moment. February 2025. And this is the ID. And again, thanks for watching.